So after they moved to Sri Kanchipuram, Ramanuja was sent to the Gurukul, the ashram of one very, very great learned Acharya. At least he was famous. His name was Yadava Prakash. Now, Yadava Prakash was a follower of Shankaracharya. He was a staunch Mayavadi, but he was very highly learned. So Ramanuja very much wanted to understand the Vedas. And he was so, so intelligent that whatever he would hear, he would immediately learn and understand and grasp. But whenever he would hear the Mayavad conclusions of his teacher, it would just cause too much pain to his heart. But because by nature he was very mild, very gentle, and very humble, he would just somehow or other restrain and tolerate his feelings. But one day it is explained, Yadava Prakash, after the classes, he asked Ramanuja to stay back because Ramanuja was his favorite and dear most of all students because he was so obedient and so humble and so anxious to serve and so anxious to learn and so capable of learning. So when he sent all the other students away, he asked Ramanuja to massage his legs with oil. So Ramanuja was very humbly massaging his legs. And then one student came back and he asked his teacher that I have a question in terms of one of the shlokas from the Chantogya Upanishad. Here it is described that the lotus eyes, Lord Narayan, they have a beautiful reddish color. Can you explain this in more detail? So his guru explained according to Shankaracharya this verse, that the meaning of this is that, he used the Sanskrit, that the eyes of Narayan are beautiful, reddish color, like the rear end of a monkey. And he was going on explaining in this way. And Ramanuja Charja, when he heard this blasphemy of Lord Narayan, just tears started flowing from his eyes, and these tears were hot, and they started falling on the body of his guru, and his guru felt these burning tears, and he looked up and he saw Ramanuja in great distress crying. So Jadava Prakash says, why are you crying? He said, because I cannot tolerate hearing this blasphemy of my Lord. What do you mean? He said, how could you compare the lotus eyes of Lord Narayan to the rear end of a monkey? He said, this is Shankaracharya's explanation I am repeating. Can you think of something better? And then Ramanuja very, very expertly in a poetic way explained the same Sanskrit verse to explain that the real meaning is that his eyes are red like the red lotus that is in the presence of the shining sun. And at that time, Yadava Prakash became very angry. He said, you think that you know better than our Acharya Shankar? You think you know better than, our, than your own guru? And at that time, there became a great tension between the two. On another occasion, Yadava Prakash was giving a lecture, and he was explaining how the form of the Lord is an illusion, how the Supreme Absolute Truth is Satchit Ananda, and how he is beyond Satchit Ananda. And when Ramanuja was hearing this, he could not control himself. He stood up and he gave a counter explanation, which completely defeated his guru. And his guru became very angry. He said, Why do you even come here to learn from me? Why don't you just chastise them very seriously? He said, you are impudent. You think you can challenge your spiritual master. You are a rascal. And then Yadava Prakash became very worried that this boy, he is so learned. And he has so much of a pure heart and so much devotion to Narayan that he will completely destroy the philosophy of monism. He will completely discredit Shankaracharya if he's allowed to continue on. So he called some of his disciples to a secret meeting to discuss what to do about him. One of the disciples said, why don't you expel him from school? Another disciple said, that's even worse. If he excels him from school, he will start his own school. And the way he's speaking, his school will completely defeat and discredit all of our guru's philosophy and make an ass out of our guru. So then the guru said, the only way that we can protect our mission is this boy must be killed. So they planned out a way to kill him. I will take all of my students on a pilgrimage to the Ganges in northern India. This will take many, many months. And during that time, we will figure out some way to kill him. And then when we come back, we will tell them that during the trip, he fell ill and he died. And then no one will question us. So they planned out this trip to the Ganges. And when Ramanuja Charja, when he heard that they were going to Ganga, and Guru was taking them on pilgrimage, he became very happy. He was ready to go. And his cousin, Govinda, also decided that he would go because he was also a student. So they all went together. And when they came to one place near the Vindhya Mountains, it is explained that just living in forest besides a river. And 
he first he sent Ramanuja out to do some errands, to collect some flowers and so forth, to bring back for worship. And while he was away, Gurudev told the disciples that this is the proper time that we should kill him in the forest. No one will ever know. But while he was speaking, it was just about evening, the sun was about to set, and Govinda happened to be in the trees, in the forest nearby, and he heard the whole diabolical plan. So he was very much disturbed. And he approached Ramanuja in the forest, and he told him that you should not come back, because this Yadava Prakash and his disciples, they are so envious and fearful of you, that they plan to kill you on this very evening. So Ramanuja began to run through the forest to get away. And when he did not come for a long time, Guru and the disciples all started calling him and searching everywhere. And when night was beginning to fall, they realized that he must have been killed by some wild animals, and therefore he must be dead. They didn't suspect that he knew. So they were all very happy and joyful in their hearts, but because Govinda was there, they all pretended that they were very sad. And Yadava Prakash began to preach to Govinda the difference between the body and the soul, and how you should not lament over the death of a body because the soul is eternal and Govinda was listening patiently. So Ramanuja, he was running through the forest and he was only very young. I believe he was only about 18 years old and he didn't know where he was. He was a long, long way from home, so many hundreds and hundreds of miles from home. And he became very fearful. And then in his fearful condition, the night was coming. He was in the jungle. He did not know where to go, where to not go. He started to think that Lord Narayan is the supreme controller of everyone and I am his devotee, so why should I be afraid he will protect me? And just upon remembering the mercy of Lord Narayan, all of his fear was vanished. And just after he came to that conclusion of taking shelter of the lotus feet of Narayan, he saw a hunter with his wife walking through the forest. They were very surprised to see this young man. Where are you going? He said, I am going to Kanchipuram, but I do not know how to get there. I didn't, it's such a long way. And they said, oh, well, we are also going to Kanchipuram. Why? He, he had already been traveling for over one month. That means such a long distance. He said, so far away, why you are going to Kanchipuram? The hunter said, well, you see, I trap birds and kill birds for a profession myself and my wife, and this is a very sinful activity. So we must go to Rameshwar and Kanchipuram to perform yagya and to worship the lotus feet of the Lord to neutralize the offense of my, our sins. So we will guide you in that all the way back. So they walked for about an hour. They came to a river bank, started a fire. The wife of this hunter said she was very thirsty. And the hunter said, now it is too dark, but there is a well very close nearby. And from that well, we will get water in the morning. So the next morning, they came upon that well, and Ramanuja climbed down the mountain to, to where that well was and brought water to the lady, and she drank. But she was still thirsty, so he went back and forth bringing more and more and more water as she drank. And one time when he was bringing it, she disappeared. She was no longer there. He brought the water up. She was not there. And the hunter was not there. No one was there. So he was wondering, how will I find Kanchipuram now? And just as he was thinking that way, he looked. Above the trees, he saw big, beautiful temples. What city is this? Then he saw someone passing by toward the well. He said, what is this city? I said, you don't know this city? It's the famous city of Kanchipuram. And he said, and you are one of the prized students of Yadava Prakash. You live here. How do you not know the city of Kanchipuram? So then that person walked by. And Ramanuja Chaya could understand that that hunter and his wife were Lakshmi and Narayan. He got that realization from within his heart. That when he was lost, in a helpless condition in the forest, he prayed that the shelter of Lord Narayan always protects his devotees. So on the basis of that humble prayer, Lord Narayan personally came with Lakshmi to bring him back to his home. So then he just sat by the well, weeping and crying in ecstasy, thinking of the great mercy that he had just received from the Lord. And then he went back to his home. His mother was very happy to see him. She was thinking it would be at least six months, but he had returned only after about a month. And he told her the story, why he returned early, how Yadava Prakash was planning to kill him. So she was simultaneously very sad to hear this, but very happy that Lord Narayan saved her son. So he was at home. And some time after this, some months later, Yadava Prakash returned. And when he found that Ramanuja was at home with his mother, he went to the house and pretended to be very, very joyful, very happy. Oh, we thought you were dead. You were 
we see that you are alive, you have been saved by the Lord. And he, he and the disciples made big show of showing great happiness. But they knew that there was something else. He saw that Ramanuja was becoming so, so, so incredibly influential that he wanted him to re return to his school so that he could find some other means. So he returned for some time. You were listening to Radhanath Swami on thesacredconnect.com.